into it now. So yeah, tell me what, what's been going on there, mate. What is it I can help with? So obviously I'm very new to EXP and I've only been with you guys for, I started in Feb and I think I felt it was very surreal. And I, I think like most agents have, they have the fear of obviously no salary supporting families and where their business is going to come from. And like a lot of agents in my area, I'm very unknown. I've never worked this area. So for me, I felt, am I doing the right thing? This this is where I, I doubted myself up until the point of last week, in all honesty. So I signed up to have prospecting tools with Loop, which prospecting is all a way that I've always generated business from day dot letters 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 is a way i've always canvassed and generated business so i was skeptical on the letter initially um but i thought no i'm going to try it i'm going to see how it goes so where my mindset's changed from last week is obviously going to surrey last week and meeting like-minded agents some that have started up or ones that are definitely more established and you can see the journey that they've been on for what two years, four years, or whatever, and just how everyone in the room just wants to help one another. And I think for a long time, I've not been a part of any of that sort of environment where I can feel connected and like part of a team or supported. So I think that's where my mindset changed. Listening to Daisy, listening to Ian, and just realizing that I have the door knock as well. And something I've never ever done and something I never wanted to do I, th- I think for me sometimes when I'm nervous I get a, a bit of a stutter and a lisp and I get it when I record videos and I just I get nervous in situations of talking to people sometimes but I've done it I've knocked doors it's it's not all bad it's it's actually okay it really is okay and I think the more that I do the more that people recognize my face oh it's him again or whatever but it's it's a way of maybe won't generate the business straight away but it's a way of interacting with people and it's what i've got to do so help and support and guidance from you guys especially you whatever i can do is what i need to do got my first listing it was meant to go live tomorrow (laughs) she's not ready till next week i wasn't sure if she's putting me off i've had um yeah so it's Mate, well it's it's epic that you've got so that's obviously come since the surrey event right that list and i think i seen you post on workplace actually was that from a door knock from a door knock that one Mate, that's <laughs> negative i'd sent her two letters prior to that though yeah so, yeah yeah see mate, this 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 is the thing like I, I talk about this a lot actually about um you know this this kind of like um hidden magic that your marketing has so you know it's easy to knock on that door get a positive response and think great a door knock got me that listing and the door knock did get you that listing but maybe that was just the last domino to fall in a sequence of dominoes that started because you know you sent a flyer or a letter or or whatever it might have been you know in the weeks leading up to that so I think the lesson there is you know you can't do enough of the right thing as long as you're consistently chipping away and kind of putting yourself out there everything's a little brick in the wall to kind of get you to where, you know, you want to be eventually with your door knocking. Tell me a little bit about how that's going in terms of the scripts that you're using. What sort of volume are you getting out to? Or have you just door knocked as a one-off event when you had a surge of adrenaline and you twice? Okay. So my plan is Wednesdays and Thursdays. So today and tomorrow and my door knocking, I will go on to weekends. I want to do Saturdays. Initially I thought about doing Sundays and then, I put a post on everyone was like, I'm not sure. Other people were like, just do it. But I spoke to my partner, my partner was like, you wouldn't want someone knocking the door on a Sunday. And that's that's a fine line. So I, I don't know in terms of Sundays, but Wednesdays and Thursdays are going to be my days to door knock. Um, and obviously, as the nights get lighter, it's 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 easier to stay at later, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, yeah. In terms of script, I didn't want to overthink it and listen to Ian. I put a script and a jargon on there, and I thought. I'm not going to remember all this. So my way into the door or conversation, I'm using Sprift as well for the reports. Right. So what I'm doing, I'm I'm just introducing myself and I'm saying that you've obviously had a couple of letters from me um, already, so you'll be aware of who I am. Um, just wanted to reintroduce really myself and see how you're getting on. 
and that's where I'm leaving it at the moment. Um, there's one around the corner from my house that I'm monitoring because I really, really want to list it. They were over, overpriced by a local, I won't say local, a large um, corporate. Um, they've drastically reduced twice since I've been round because I said it was overpriced. So I'm just monitoring that. The conversation I had with them was really, really good. And the conversation I've had with many of ones has been good, but it's not led to, other than the one that I've got coming on, it's not led to anything else as of yet. It's just okay. a tabs. I've got one, tell a lie. I've got one, one to call back on Monday next week. She wanted to um, think it over. She said she got a heavy week this week with work. So I've got one more for next week. Um, but my, my strategy to start with are slow movers, ones that have been on the market for a long, long period of time. And I think if I can get a price reduction, change their photos if they've been fairly poor, um, and then bring a video tour in, I think it can obviously help. Um, and that's that's the, the avenue that I'm going down when I'm knocking the doors, just saying I want to try something different. I want to give you a better platform to try and sell it. Obviously, the price may need to change. How do you feel about that? And most people, well, most people I've spoken to so far understand that. They're priced too heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they, they will do. I mean, what, what I'd say is when, I think it's a good tactic, like sometimes less is more in a situation like that because, and we all do it, like when you're nervous and you're trying to fill every gap yeah. in the conversation with something, you end up just... Blech, like puking up on people and sometimes when that happens you're not thinking too straight and the advice or the words that come out your mouth aren't necessarily you know reflective of, of the best job you could be doing i think it's like you know you mentioned about getting nervous when you do videos and things as well it's the same with video like i always find that and it is quite strange when the camera goes on even when you know we had a very brief chat before hitting record but as soon as i hit record you probably would have noticed like a bit of a change thinking oh no he's recording the call we all do it and it's almost like you forget to be human for a moment but when you do a video i think if you can nail down the first sentence and you've got your outro so you know where it's going to start and when you are finished, you know you're going to say i'm you know i'm rob thank you for watching if i can help you with the sale of your house give me a call once you've nailed that first and last sentence it's almost like the middle bit you can kind of blag your way through a little bit it's just giving yourself that sort of semi-structure to be a human and not just start talking loads of gibberish because you're nervous because you've just met a stranger for the first time. So I think that's really solid in terms of knocking on. And if it is that you've got the opening that you've wrote to them before, it kind of gives you a bit of an easy in. Personally, I'd say probably don't get into price conditioning um, on the doorstep in the first conversation. I think it's just a case of... I can't possibly comment on whether or not your house is overvalued because I've not actually seen it. Um, I can only see the brief detail that I can see online. But of course, it'd be amazing to pop round, take a look around, and I'll sit and just give you honest, impartial advice. Whether you decide to switch agents or not at this stage, it's irrelevant. Let me just see if I can give you any sort of input that might help you on the way to achieving that goal of a sale. And then, of course, once you get to know them and once you've seen them and once you've got evidence and once you can educate them and once you can get on the same level, I think it's a bit easier to educate them properly rather than standing there and being like, gosh, it shouldn't be on for more than 200,000. What are you thinking at 230? Do you know what I mean? I just think it's probably going to carry more weight um, and do you more favors to have that conversation in the right context rather than on the doorstep. So if people start pressing you, oh, do you think it's overpriced? Just say, I couldn't possibly say, I don't know. I've not stepped foot through your door yet. Looks lovely from the outside, but I've not seen that new kitchen that you've done. I've not seen the size of the bedrooms. I need to come and explore it properly. Let's have a coffee, get the custard creams in and we'll talk properly <laughs> and see what we can do. So I think with door knocking, the hardest bit is knocking on the door, right? Like if you've, exactly, man, if you've, kind of swallowed that frog and you turned up and you've knocked on the door and you've sat there as the landing lights come on and you've seen them walk into the door and your heart's racing and you've got over that and you've managed to kind of park those fears and park that ego and just get stuck into that conversation. I think that's the hardest part of a door knock bar none. So make credit to you for going ahead and doing it. I always say, mate, like, and I know that Ian's, um, Ian's quite a talker himself and he's quite bullish on door knocking. So I'm sure at that event, you know, he would have 
give a lot of useful information and um, probably some less useful information as well, but definitely some golden nuggets in there. And uh, the way that he's got to where he is, he's just relentless. Like, did he tell you the story about when he went and um, took his little boy surfing and then the, the property came out? Did not tell you? Okay. All right. So what, what he did is this was, this was kind of what put Ian on my radar. So he came on my podcast about a year ago and we was talking about lead gen and, um, Ian's got a massive pipeline and he lists massive numbers. So I was like, where do your leads come from? He was like, well, I get more from referral than recommendation now, he said, but then I do exactly today what I did on day one when no one knew who I was. I said, what's that then? He said, well, if someone's got the house on the market, you better fucking bet your bottom dollar I'm going to go and speak to them. He said, I was out out with my little boy, went surfing last week. He lives on the coast. He was like, we got in the sea, you know, had our swimsuits on, went surfing and got out. And then as I got out, there was a board there at the top of the hill that wasn't there when I got in. Like I didn't know it was on the market. So what we did is we dried off, jumped in the car. I just drove straight up to the house. My little boy, Leo, was in the car. I just knocked on and had a conversation. I said, what are you doing? You've got on the market and you've not given me a call. And um, he said like it was just one of those where we hit it off straight away and he ended up getting an appointment. And eventually, I don't think he got it there and then, but eventually that property signed up. And there's not many people that would be out with a little boy and find the bandwidth in the mind or in the day to go ahead and knock on a door and start a conversation. And I'm not saying that that's what everyone should be doing, but I think it shows a great relentless attitude that even with a £200,000 pipeline, he's getting out and knocking on the door, which quite frankly, a lot of startups who can't afford to pay the rent next month aren't willing to do. And there's a real reason why Ian's at the level that he is because he's willing to consistently put himself out there. So first off, mate, I think you need massive props for going out and putting your dreams above your fears and just tackling that because I know you mentioned that was a new a new venture for you. You've never done door knocking before and it is quite scary i understand mate so it's good that you've you managed to to, to bite that bullet thank you um the other thing was you mentioned about direct mail so is that something you're still doing are you still sending your letters is that something that you're still trying to kind of trying to own as a strategy yeah so i was doing it relentlessly in terms of printing whatever came off or whatever changed that day but i've changed that now so thursdays will be my direct mail letter days but I also I'm changing that up as well because I'm doing that I'm still going to do the magic letters 100% it works I've got eight numbers on the board to bring up so I've got eight points of contact that has come from letters I will always do that but something Daisy said as well and something else somebody else said to me um the other week just target your, your lesser agents that are no good in your area don't go for the creme de la creme on the market because you're not going to get it and I don't think there's any reason why I'm not going to get something if I want something you'll go and get it why All right. so, so, so I'm clear they didn't tell you to not target the higher end the, the creme de la creme so they're not going to come to you <laughs> that's what they said they're not going to come to you not going to come to you oh, wow. so I uh, I don't agree I think yeah. Thanks fuck for that because I'm about to go on a fucking massive rant about that. But sorry, mate. Go on. The difference is we're more personal. We're I'm here seven days. I'm not just. I'm not going to name names of companies, but I'm not just a company. I'm an individual person that wants to help and support that that client. I don't just want to say, "Oh, I'm, I'm the best." I'm, I might not be the best. But I'll give you my 110% and I'll make sure that I do everything I can to sell your house. And it's this is what Daisy said. She said, I'm not, I might not be the best estate agent, but I'll market your property the best and I'll um make it the best it can be to sell and she'll sell it. And I'm not gonna say I'm not the best agent because I, I don't need to say that, but I'm I'm a good agent. I've done it for a long time. I may not have been active in the field for the last couple of years but I've always been in property. I've always done this. And I don't think there's any reason why a house that's on for three million pounds with somebody local to me that I can't go and sell it. The pictures aren't great. They've got no video tours. Why can't I do a better job than that? I can offer them viewings on a Sunday. I can offer them viewings at eight o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night. Why can't I do that? There's no reason why I can't do that. It's just getting that opportunity. So I will knock the door. I've got three on my list to knock local to me now today or tomorrow but i'm going to do it different this is where i was going with that i'm going to send a specific card i've already sent one magic letter to them 
I'm going to send a specific card. The key features, like Daisy says, in that property that should be highlighted better and try it that way. But I'm going to knock with the card as well. That's what I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. I don't know. I want to try something to try and get into those houses as well. That's. <laughs> I think the key with that, mate, will will again be the door not being being present yeah. in person. But just to kind of park that first point, mate, like that's it's it's just absolutely ridiculous that that's just somebody else's limited belief that's been passed into a group of people. I don't know who said it. I'm not going to ask because I don't want to sound like I'm digging anyone out. But it's fucking bollocks. That's the sort of attitude and mindset set that really that, that really bothers me because it, it's kind of like someone's got a predetermined idea of oh I can't work with that client. I can't work with that. Let me just say this right. Whether someone's got a lavish five million pound mansion, a big condo overlooking the sea with the best views you've ever seen, and you know it's it's a beautiful home, or, or whether they've got a little sixty grand terraced house that's beaten up and needs a full refurb, behind those bricks are still people with a brain who think and function like people who have a pain point in their life. Now it might well be that the person at sixty grand can't afford to pay their mortgage because they've just lost the job. They urgently need to sell. It's on the market at the wrong price with the wrong marketing and they're getting swallowed up by those monthly payments and they're going to get repossessed and blacklisted you're duty bound if you feel as though you can help that individual to go and have a conversation you could be the reason why they don't get their house taken off them or why you sell it in good time without them being a financial ruin the same with the the, the couple who've got the five million pound condo overlooking the sea if they can't afford that mortgage or if they've got a reason why they need to sell a motivation something pressing in their life that means that property has to go and you feel as though you can do a better job the marketing you feel as though you've got advice you feel as though however that comes you've got the key to allow them to overcome that burden again you're duty bound to go and have a conversation with them now if you're going to have a conversation if you send your letters if you knock on the door if you open up that channel of communication and they say actually rob not for me mate please don't call me again i appreciate you know you're doing your job by knocking on but please, I don't want to advance this conversation, then of course you respect those boundaries and you can go away knowing that you can put your head on the pillow at night thinking, well, I tried. It's up to them. Maybe they'll come back in the future. If you don't knock on and they never sell, that's kind of on you. Like your job is to literally help people overcome this obstacle. And by not opening up that channel of communication and because of your own limiting beliefs, I think is a disservice to you first and foremost, but by extension, it's almost, it's also a disservice to your community and people that you could be helping and supporting. So I'm glad that you squashed that out yourself. Cause I think that that was absolutely awful advice from whichever direction that came with your strategy, mate. So just kind of zoning on direct mail for a second. Um, you've mentioned the magic letter more than once. And at the start of the call, you said I was skeptical about the letter. So you've kind of referenced an individual template on a few occasions. Just to be clear, mate, with the direct with the magic letter, um, it's not designed, and nor should you be sending it frequently. In in my opinion, I think when you first set up, and you mentioned you've got eight numbers on your board there that you wouldn't have got without it. That's where the magic is. So when you've launched, when no one knows who you are, when nobody's seen your face or recognizes your name. If you jump, if you just dump it on your market, it's a, a call to action that gets your phone ringing, that gets people intrigued, that puts names and numbers in your database, not instructions on your books, but numbers in your database. And then the idea is, is that you've then got, as you've just seen, you've got eight people now that are in your database, they're in your ecosystem, you can follow up, you can build a rapport, you can send them links, you can be helpful. And maybe in a month or two or three or four or five or six, those people on your boards convert into listings on your website. Maybe they don't, but it has given you an opportunity now to, to build those relationships the magic letter is designed to get your phone ringing in the first instance beyond that you need some kind of a, a nurture sequence in place so when it comes to your you know we'll, we'll say sort of traditional prospecting you know hard collateral that you're going to put in somebody's hand be that a letter be that a card be that a flyer in my experience mate and i, I you know, you'll learn by trial and error, I guess, and you might find something that works for you, but just kind of leaning back on what worked for me and where I wasted money and where I got a really solid return on investment. You need a solid nurture that's value-based. So it doesn't feel natural sometimes when we're paying 70p for a stamp and you want every opportunity, every sort of touch point, you want to be like, look how great I am, look what I can do. I can do videos, I can do drones, I can do pictures. And you really, really, really just want to 
fuke that up on people and let them know, look what I can do, what the corporate company isn't. But that's not the secret. Like the secret is to be cool, to be calm, to be measured, to be composed and just try and give them either relevant advice or inspiration and, and guidance on how you can help them without necessarily expecting something in return. But the ironic thing is, is that the more you do that and the better you can do that, the more will come back. It, it really, really, really is the case. It's like, I don't know, I know that you obviously onboarded with Aaron, but I don't know if you ever see my content on LinkedIn. It's all about advice for estate agents. It's all about um, do this to build a business, do this to build a brand, things you need to know about Facebook, how to get more instructions, how to get your fees up. It's all value-based. My selfish agenda is I want to recruit agents into EXP because I get paid by helping them be successful. But if I go out and just say that all the time, call me to discuss EXP, call me to discuss EXP, no one fucking calls me. And the reason why they don't is because I'm not giving them a reason to. Um, so I think it's important that, and however you do this, it can be worth taking a step back to take five steps forward when it comes to your direct mail in terms of writing down what you want to cover, what you want to say, what value you feel you can give. And the way that I found it converts best, mate, is through um, stories. So a good example is Adam will have written um, a sequence of letters that any EXP agent can plug into. So there's, you know, on, on, on your CRM, there'll be a load of content that you can just plug and send. I think it's important that you put that Rob Morris magic on it. It's coming from you. You need to agree with what's in there first and foremost, but also I think it needs to be written in your voice is, is, is the way that I view it. So what we did is we didn't reinvent the wheel, but my partner's a copywriter. So we might get a point that's, you know, generically in most people's direct mail sequence. So for example, on the EXP sequence, I think week four might be, you know, you've been four weeks on the market, your property's not sold. Typically the first two to four weeks is quite an important time for getting interest. If it is that you've not had that traction yet, maybe try adjusting the front picture on your advert. It can give the appearance of a new listing that can help with more clicks and typically more traffic online leads to more conversations and more viewings. That is the underlying point of that, that letter. Whereas we'll still say the same thing, but instead it'll be, um, I was marketing Mr. Morris's property on 15 Hilltop Drive, straight away, they're going to recognize that the subject matter of that letter is an actual client who's in the same position that they are. Hilltop Drive, oh, I recognize that. It's only you know two minutes around the corner. So straight away, you've got to buy in because there's a basis of familiarity. Mr. Morris was keen to sell his property. In his words, he wanted somewhere um, small enough to maintain, but large enough for the grandchildren to come and visit. So, you know, a downsize was definitely on the cards. Um, after four weeks on the market, disappointingly, we'd not had any traction. And it was important for Mr. Morris that we got the best possible price and reducing that figure wasn't an option because they've been on for a month and they're thinking, crap, and we're going to have to take less. So straight away, you're kind of reinforcing that's not the only piece in the puzzle. Um what we did is we reviewed the performance of Mr. Morris's property and we made an adjustment to the listing. We changed the front aspect picture to a picture of the kitchen because he'd recently had it extended. And what we found was over the next two weeks, you know, traffic improved by 15%. And two weekends later, we got a block viewing and lo and behold, we sold it for full asking price the following Monday. I just thought I'd share that story and kind of suggest that if you're looking for a way to pick up the traffic, changing that front picture can have more of an impact than maybe what you think it will. So you still, it's still the same point as the EXP letter but because it's been wrapped up in the case study of another client who's in the same position that they are in the same market that they're in it instantly becomes more relatable and although you're not beating your chest because you're talking about the client you're still saying look what i did for this customer look how i got this result so you're kind of still beating your chest but in a, in a slightly more subtle way which is more palatable um, and, and i find that by delivering value wrapped in case studies using actual clients properties it converts really well and we use to embed whichever property we was referring to in the case study we used to embed that within the letterhead so they could see at the bottom a picture of the home and they'll recognize it local people know local buildings so they might walk the dog past that property every single day and be like oh fucking hell did Rob sell that oh did ben sell that oh i didn't really i wondered what happened with that house and uh, you know they just start to connect the dots and they actually see your value rather than you just saying Oh, hey, you've been on the market for four weeks now. Maybe you need to change your picture. Do you know what I mean? It's a completely different conversation. Um, so with your direct mail, mate, what I'm trying to say in a roundabout way is that it's fucking effective. It's a scalable door knock, right? Because you're getting yourself out there in a very aggressive, cost-effective manner with little friction. You can block out Thursdays, fold up all your letters, 
stuff them in, put a stamp on, or get out and handle everyone, whatever you want to do. And you can get your message out there to 50, 100, 200, 300 people a week if you wanted to. It's a really good way of doing it. And then for the ones where you think, I need to speak to these people, I could really help this person, or you know, you just got the time, you've carved out a time in your diary, go and have a conversation because direct mail is amazing. It works incredibly well over time. The ROI, if you do it properly, it will be fucking phenomenal. So I think it's important that you do it, but nothing is as instant as a door knock and you're four weeks into your business and you need instructions. So a door knock, I think, is a solid, solid, solid thing to complement that strategy. So I, I think you should do both. Is is my honest is my honest feedback, mate. So it, it kind of looks like you're on the right path. Just make sure you get that direct mail piece right because the magic letter, it, it can it, it's no good if you do it every time. It, it loses its magic. It's as simple as that. See, it's 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 interesting to hear because I thought that as well, but then I've heard other people in EXP that just purposely only will use the magic letter. They could send it seven times until they get a response, maybe. But they will only send that. I've looked at other templates. I've looked at everything else. And I thought, I do need to switch it up eventually. I've only, so far, I've only sent two magic letters to a property. I've not done anything else other than that yet. So this is good to have this conversation because now I know that you need to switch it up. But bear in mind, I haven't started with properties that have been on the market for, say, four weeks or six weeks. I'm going off ones that are on the market for 12 weeks or 10 weeks and so on, okay. and then ones that have come off the market. So two, two, two things with this then, mate. So first off, going back to your point about the aggressive use of the letter, the example or, or the scenario that I'd give you, if you if you imagine like we've got a pretty good relationship now, like we've only met recently, but you know we've exchanged WhatsApps, we've had a good chat on the phone, we're having a Zoom call today, we get along. I'm trying to help you with your business and and vice versa. I'd like to think if I ring you on next Monday, you know, you'll see my name pop up and you'll be like, oh, Ben's on the phone. Hey, Ben, you all right, mate? That'll be the conversation. If I then said to you, oh, Rob, will you lend me 20 quid? Like, all right. And then if I rang you on Wednesday and went, Rob, lend me 20 quid. And then I rang you on Thursday and said, Rob, lend me 20 quid. Then I rang you the following Monday and went, Rob, lend us 20 quid. There's going to get to a point where after two, three, four calls, you're going to see my name. And instead of being like, oh, there's Ben, your, your knee-jerk reaction is going to be, is he going to ask me for 20 quid again? What the fuck does Ben want now? That that Because it's so predictable why I'm calling that you almost don't want to answer the phone. The last thing that you want to be with your marketing strategy is predictable. And if they they will start to recognize oh, that color envelope, is that Rob? Oh, that handwriting, I recognize that. Is he going to ask me to, is he going to send me the same message again? You don't want that to be the mindset going in. Again, the magic of it is that, it's punchy and it gets your your phone ringing if it's used in the right the right quantities. If you overkill it, it becomes predictable, and when it becomes predictable, it becomes ineffective. Um, not only ineffective, I, I'd kind of argue borderline damaging. So the, the the way that I do it is I integrate the magic letter every now and then. I've not done direct mail for a while, Rob, because I'm not. I am taking listings, but only on recommendation and referral. I'm not proactively trying to get properties at the moment. But if I woke up tomorrow and decided, do you know what, I'm gonna get on the tools and I'm going to try and go hell for leather and list a few houses now. The first thing I'd do is send the magic letter. But after that, I'd make sure it was backed up by a more robust nurture sequence where I, I drip feed content over time that's going to be relevant and useful and paint me in the right picture. So that's the first thing. Like, don't be that guy who's just ringing, asking for 20 quid every 24 hours because it gets irritating. Um, what was the other point that we made? We was talking about, oh, the timing. Um don't do that. I, I, I honestly, mate, I'd, I'd say right to everyone, uh, right to everyone, even the ones that have just come on the market. And Adam advises against this. I know that me and Adam have got a difference of opinion on this. And I guess it's your business. It's up to you to decide who you think's right, who you think's wrong, and what's right for your business. But to kind of argue my case, he says a property has just come on the market. Um, they're not going to convert. They're not going to change. What's the point on wasting paper? Save your 70p on the stamp and send it to someone who is likely to convert. My argument is that whenever you're speaking to a prospect, every touch point, every exposure is a... Tell you what I, I use an example of. I've used this before, but if you imagine like, you know, like on the old, on the, like the Disney cartoons and you've got like a cowboy and they've got one of those ropes and they go like that and then they throw it around someone and then they go and they, they pull in like the person towards them, right? It's kind of like if you imagine that you've got your rope and you're throwing it around and every letter that you send, every touch point, every exposure they've got to your business, it's quite literally you going Zzz, with the rope and pulling the customer towards you. Now, some customers are going to come with one big yank and you're going to convert them 
straight away. Other ones, you've got to pull and pull and pull and pull before they actually get to you. So sending that introduction letter, however that looks and whatever you want to put, again, I've, I've got my approach in the way that I do it. But that first letter, they're never going to ring you. They're not going to call you and register. They're not going to be doubting their agent at that point. It's been on the market 48 hours. Like They're, they're not going to call you. But what it does do, is get you through their door. They see your face on the letterhead. They see your name. It's the first kind of stepping stone in a sequence of stepping stones that might get you the conversion in three, four, five, six months. It's the longer game. So I just think it gets the relationship off on the right start rather than you just turning up asking for something. Like it's very cliched and overused, but people always use uh, marketing with the analogy of chatting a girl up at the bar. You know, if you went straight up to a girl that you've never spoke to, you've never met, they've never seen you, you've not bought them a drink, you've had no dialogue, you've built no rapport, you've got no relationship, relationship and you say hey do you want to come back to mine you're going to get a pretty frosty reception if you're going to probably get a drink thrown over you and you're not going to get the outcome that you want from it but if you've invested time into that relationship and you get to know each other you break the ice you take them out for food the next day and you know you start to build a relationship then you've got more chance of that relationship blossoming rather than fluffing it on the first on the first attempt mm -hmm. so it's kind of a similar type of thing you know i think it lays the right foundations so quite frankly rob you've earned the right to get their business in a few months time when it is they're ready to convert and that is the key mate it's a long term strategy you've only been in the business a month and i think you're doing very well mate you've got your listing you're in a cold market You've got eight numbers on your board of people that are now in your database that, by the way, you definitely need to keep on top of because a lot of people, myself included in the past, as salespeople were impatient and it's like, oh, you're not ready to convert, you're dead to me and on to the next one. Like, Make sure you keep up to date with these people, even if that's just, oh, when we spoke. You know, I know you've not sold yet. You mentioned you was looking out for a bungalow. Um, I've just noticed this come on the market with Dixon's. You know, I just thought I'd share it in case you've not seen it. They, they probably don't want that bungalow, but it's give you a reason to, to create a touch point, that's, you know? It's the nurture. Exactly, yeah, that's exactly the one for next week, what I'm doing at the moment. Any new bungalows that come on, because she's looking locally. It's actually a bungalow. I just called that right. She's looking for a bungalow, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in house Zone, so she actually is. She was buying... How oh, weird is that? All the elsewhere. So she's now looking for another one. And I said, I'll, I'll, I'll try and help you find one as well. So that's that's a, a good point. And there's one there's one on here that I spoke to on Thursday and she's having a, a marriage breakup and she's on the market. It's a, it's a beautiful house. It's, it irritates me because it's right around the corner and I have to drive past it every day. But there's hers and there's one next door. They're, they're brand new builds. Um, and they're on... The, her next door is on with four agents and it's, it's not selling, but it's not as big as hers. She's on with one agent, but she's only on with the agent because she bought it from the agent, is what she told me. Um, they've not done anything great with it. The price is a little bit top-heavy, she says. and I agree. Um, but I wasn't sure when to, to re-contact her. I sent her a spiff report over the weekend. I saw that she opened it yesterday, so I just sent her an email just to, to see if she needed any more help with the report or anything. I haven't heard from her yet, but I didn't when to to rechase I don't want to be too keen with them so I'm over killing them already it's like obviously it's nurturing I need to nurture them but I don't want to nurture it too slow but as well the one thing with this sorry to go off the subject what she liked she liked the the personal approach into the website how it's wrote up about me and um relays a story about my family Whereas when I spoke to my mum and dad, they didn't understand being so open and out there. They thought you needed to be more just corporate. Yeah, more corporate. And I said, that's not the way the business is. People want to understand you as that individual. And this is this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this. I want people, I've never worked this area. I live here, but I've never worked it. I want people around here to be able to think, Rob's a nice guy, he's a family man. He just wants to help. And I want to be able to be coming across like that so that people want to use me. But I also want to be able to support, like all other agents do, locally and help in the area. So that's, I think, what will play to the key factors later. But it's with this, when's too soon to be too keen? Would you nurture? Yeah. You mean? Yeah. I think if you're being helpful and you're not being pushy, I think it's it's more in the medium. Like if you're, 
and I'm sure you wouldn't be, but just speaking generically now, not about you specifically, Rob, but I think if somebody's being very, um, you know, push here, you're ready to sign, can we get that appointment? You know, yeah. you're ready to book into my diary. That's a completely different message to, hey, Sam, uh, really enjoyed the chat last Wednesday. Um, I was actually taking a few notes while we was talking, and obviously I noticed that you're looking to buy a two-bedroom bungalow. I didn't ask what your budget was, but I've been keeping an eye out for you, and I've just noticed this, this, and that come onto the market. There's every chance you might have noticed, but I just wanted to fire this over just in case these could be of interest. Um, if they're not, I'm actually going out to one in a couple of weeks. You know, Let me know if you want me to keep my eye out, and if I see anything that might fit the bill for you, I'm happy to keep you posted. I just think this, this time's for a soft nurture, and this time to be a bit more direct. But now you've got the details and you're starting to build your database, you're... Um, you're effectively able to build that relationship and slow and nurture them quite easy. And that doesn't have to be a phone call, you know, kind of getting up in the grill with a conversation every time that you've got something to say, you know, harness WhatsApp, um, emails, text messages, you can send voice notes. And um, there are multiple ways that you can kind of prospect people without being overly invasive, if that makes sense. But if they've taken the initiative to call and have a conversation, they've passed on the details and you've kind of got that opt in, you've pretty much got the right and, Again, going back to if you think you can genuinely help them, you've also got the duty to kind of continue that conversation. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that that that's the way that, that that that's the way that I'd um I'd view it. Come from a place of of being helpful, and there will be a time where it's like, look, Sam, would you believe it's been two months since we had that first conversation? Like, obviously, we've kept in contact since, and you know, I absolutely love talking to you and i hope that i can help you but it's been two months i think now is the time you know can we go for a coffee you know kind of pop over and see if i can give you actual constructive advice that's going to get this property sold rather than us just talking about properties that you're not in a position to kind of move forward and buy it and people appreciate that you know as long as you're there and you're present because it'll get to a point it's the same when you direct mail mate they'll get to a point where they look back and think, do you know what? I've I've heard from this Rob and had advice from Rob more frequently than I have my own agent. And I'm actually contracted with them and bound to pay them a fee if they sell it. And when they get kind of get to a point in their mind where they've concluded this guy is so much more helpful, he cares, he's more accessible, he's more contactable, he's more helpful, he's more knowledgeable. When they realize that for themselves, which they will do, it kind of makes it a bit of a no-brainer that, okay, well, now I can see the difference between Rob and my current agent rather than you just saying, hey, I'm a better agent and I can do this, this, and that. It's a completely different conversation, a completely different mindset, and therefore a completely different outcome. So don't be afraid to nurture, I think, but also don't be afraid to soft nurture. If I'm speaking to agents, again, I'll kind of use my revenue share efforts because that's a big part of my business as well as selling houses. If I wanted to bring an agent into EXP and I just know they're going to be brilliant, they need to do it, they're amazing, they're well-connected, they're going to change their lives and build a better future for their family by working with me and by plugging into EXP. I know that. But if I keep saying that, it turns into a sales pitch and it's like this guy is just saying what he thinks I want to hear and it loses its impact. Whereas if I say, hey, Rob, look, I know you've got a few months until you're ready to launch a business. I've just made a podcast about you know how to boss the first four weeks in business i thought it'd be really appropriate to send it over because as you're planning forward i thought you know you might get a couple of golden nuggets have a listen would love to get your feedback and i've sent you a podcast link that you may or may not listen to but what i have done is put my name back in the forefront of your mind so you know that i'm still there and that conversation still going so yeah don't don't be afraid again if you think you can help me you're duty bound to try and help so don't 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 let your own limiting beliefs get in the way of that um, but mate, it, it very much sounds like you've got a lot of wins to take away. I think I always remember I, one of our Christmas parties, not last year, I think it was the year before, a startup came up to me and um, obviously I won't mention the guy's name. He's still in the business doing very, very well. Someone that you'd recognize, but at that point he was earlier stages in his business. His pipeline was about 40K and he was like, oh, and at, at that point I had a massive pipeline. It was when I was selling more houses. So I was doing like a hundred thousand and he's like, oh, I just really want to get to where you're at. Like, you're smashing it. Like, you know, just wanting to say, like, you're doing a brilliant job. I've been watching along. Like, you know, thanks for the... And I was like, oh, I really appreciate that, mate. Like, where's your business at? He's like, oh, 40 grand. I was like, how long have you been in the business? He was like, about six months. 
And I was like, mate, like you need to get some serious perspective. When I'd been in the business for six months, my pipeline was about 5K. It took me ages to get out of the traps. Like I, I didn't list a house for a while. Um, then I got a few listings and started to get momentum. Then COVID happened. And then I, you know, it took me a long, 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 long time to get to where he was. But he was benchmarking his chapter one at my chapter 15 and thinking, oh, but Ben's got loads more money in his pipeline than I have. And it's like, no, 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 it's not the same conversation. If we were side by side in the same race, you'd be miles ahead of me to the point where I wouldn't even be able to see you. So I think sometimes it's important to have that context as well, mate, that you have only been here four weeks. And whilst I love the ambition, you've fucking got eight leads on your board. You've got an instruction. You've got some hot follow-ups. You're out there in the community having conversations. You are light years ahead of where a lot of other agents are for a comparable period of time. So whilst it's good to dip into other people, speak to Aaron, see what he's doing, whilst it's good to jump on Workplace, you see the pipelines, you know what people are earning roughly, it's, it's good to take inspiration from that. But don't, comparison's a thief of joy, right? If you start benchmarking where you're at today versus where someone else is two years ahead of where you are today, it's not a fair fight. So, so don't make that comparison and feel like you're lacking because you're doing brilliant for the point where you're up to. That's what I did. So that's initially, I think, where you're looking at in terms of pipelines and instructions every week, you're like, okay, yeah. But I think you just trust the process. You just, it's a journey, isn't it? And I think what's more exciting than anything, this is a complete cold start. And it's, it is really exciting. You have to think because you're, you're starting something from scratch. You've got no, nothing there. And just, just trust the process. Look, like you said, this chat in six months, what he was 40, 50K. I may not be there, but I'll get there. It's just a process. Just, just enjoy every stage. I think that's what I've got to understand. Enjoy what I do. I love what I do. And I love being able to work for myself, but also having a team around me. Well, it, it that's how it feels. It, not just a team, it feels more like a family. It's, it's so much better than... I've worked on my own for the last couple of years. I've had nobody. So coming from that to this, it's totally different. And I think don't be too concerned, like you said, what everybody else is doing. And I think that's what I was doing. There was somebody that started after me that had got three instructions already and they were local to me. I was like, oh, gosh, what am I going to do? And then I was looking at their follower numbers on Instagram and Facebook. I was thinking, I don't know loads of people. I'm not a well-connected person anymore as I used to be. And that's not a bad thing because it will happen. I'll grow it organically. I will get out there. I will meet people and I'll do what I have to do. I've got a family, everyone. I've got people mm -hmm. to support. So I'll do it and I want to do it and it will it will come. It just, I'll do it in stages. That's it, Robin. You know, there's, there's a million different routes to get to the same destination and not everyone's starting point is the same. You know, you've got... Um, I always use, like, I mention her name all the time. I hope she doesn't mind, but Sam Cerrone, she's an agent not far away from you. And, and Aaron, to be honest, pro probably is a good example of what I'm going to say, but there are some people, if I put me and Sam, let's just say, side by side, I was in your boat, so I started my business in an area that I wasn't known natively. So I'm from Manchester. I moved nearer to Blackpool. My partner's from there, but I had no uh, past clients, no database, no social proof, no awareness. No one knew who I was. Didn't have any friends or family, like complete cold start. Sam, she's a fantastic agent and she's been an agent in her market for years and years and years and years and years. So all of a sudden, Ben on day one, Hey guys, I'm in business. Sam on day one. Hey guys, I'm in business. It's a completely different response. Not because she's necessarily, she is a better agent than me, but not necessarily because she is a better agent than me, but because she's laid those foundations over years and years and years of looking after people. That's now paying her back in spades that when she's gone self-employed, she's almost started three or four steps ahead of me on the monopoly board. Quite rightly so. She's earned the right. It's not a cheat. She, she's put the work in, in the market and she's benefiting from that. Whereas, because I'm on day one, I don't have the luxury of saying, hey guys, I'm in business. And then next week I've got a diary full of valuations. What I need to do is start thinking about banging doors, writing letters, getting myself out there in the community. And that's what you need to do. And that's what you are doing. And that is what's going to get you to that next stage. Now, the magic thing is, Rob, is that once you've done that for a period of time, you also earn the right to get easier touches. So ironically, the harder you work, the easier it gets, because right now you're 
you've got a little tiny snowball and you're pushing it uphill and you're fucking trying to get as much snow as you can to build a big snowball and your hands are cold and you're getting frostbite and the red roar and it's fucking painful and your legs are hurting from pushing uphill and it's a slog but when you get to the top and you drop it down the other side it just gets momentum loads of snow and you've got an avalanche all of a sudden so you just need to continue to push the snowball uphill and sometimes it feels shit and you can't be asked and you just want to sit in front of a log fire rather than getting out there and pushing the snowball but you do it for long enough and consistent enough it gets easier you start to get the results gamification is also important mate so what i mean by that is whilst it is easy sometimes to let your mind drift and start thinking about money and when I get this and I've got this many listings or if I got that property and you know have that focus in terms of where you want to take it but not to the point where you get distracted by what you can control today and what you need to do right now to get you there it's breaking that macro goal down into small micro steps so what I mean by gamification is that if you've blocked out next Wednesday and Thursday, I think they were the days that you used, but for conversation Wednesday and Thursday next week, and you think, okay, I'm going to go knock on 20 doors on Wednesday. Um, the kids are on half day at school on Thursday, so I'm going to knock on 10 doors on Thursday. And your goal is next week, I'm going to knock on 30 doors over those two days. It doesn't matter if 30 people say no, go away, stand the door in your face, 30 dogs chase you out the garden, whatever the outcome is, it's irrelevant. As long as you've knocked on 30 doors, you've won. That's it. You you can go to bed at night knowing that was a good day's work. Even if you got nothing from it, you've knocked on 30 doors. You've had 30 attempts, 30 people now have seen your face that didn't know who you were before. That is a massive fucking win. Therefore, that goes down as a successful week. If your goal on Friday is to send 80 letters and you get 80 letters sent, you've won. You've absolutely controlled the controllable. Therefore, that's a successful week. Where you're a failure or where you're coming up short is if you stay in bed for too long, you don't get up, you can't be asked knocking the doors, you find an excuse to not do it the next day, you forget to go to the post office and you don't buy your stamps and therefore you don't send your letters on the front. That's not acceptable. Turning up and not getting the result there and then is completely acceptable. In fact, it's expected because, again, there's a long-term strategy. Those little seeds that you plant, they might not sprout up straight away, but in two, three, four, five weeks' time, Hey, Rob, I got your letter last week on Friday. Thanks so much for reaching out. It's funny that you did because I've just had an argument with my estate agent. For the fifth time in a row, they've not returned my call. I'm sick of being ignored. Are you free to come around for a brew on Wednesday? And all of a sudden, you start to see then, wow, that worked. And then once you see it's working and once you start getting those little wins, especially at the stage that you're at, mate, like it's so exciting because every little breakthrough gets a fucking victory dance and you kind of feel like you're going in the right direction. And that just gives you more momentum to carry on. So, so enjoy those little short term wins set yourself these little targets it doesn't have to be anything massive like i say it could be you know how many people you speak to how much content you create how many doors you knock on how many letters you send whatever it is set these benchmarks of what success looks like for that week and if you take enough of those tiny steps you'll look back and realize how fucking far you've come because it mounts up quite quickly um but mate you should be really proud of where you're at and and what you've been getting involved in because not everyone applies themselves it's crazy you take a brave step to set up a business you invest money you put it on the line you try and build a better life for your family but when it comes to doing the work people just freeze and that's a last thing that you've done you're quite warm and fluid you're putting yourself out there you're throwing shots and inevitably when you're throwing enough punches at some point you're going to hit a knockout blow um, and, and you'll continue to build from that mate so just, so just keep on the track that you're on it sounds like you're doing brilliant don't, don't be too hard on yourself thank you i appreciate it good man right mate it's a uh... Well, we started the call at half six in the morning. My earliest call for a little while is now half seven. So I'm going to let you have your day back and go and spend time with those beautiful children of yours, mate. But if you need anything, just give me a shout. If you've got any questions, send me a WhatsApp or whatever, and I'll come back to you. But keep me posted with how it goes, because I'm genuinely intrigued to see how things go. And obviously, I'm happy to chip in if you need it. Okay. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Take care. Hero. Cheers, mate. Bye.